Hey everybody, this is Eric Worre and welcome to NetworkMarketingPro.com. I'm here with Kevin Thompson, the man, the myth, uh, network marketing attorney and advocate for our profession. I'm actually here, we just finished filming for the network marketing documentary that's going to be coming out um, in November. And Kevin has also agreed to come speak at our GoPro Recruiting Mastery event, talk to you about kind of the misconceptions about network marketing, the reality about the legal aspects of network marketing, the fact we were just talking just uh, before we started here about the crazy differences between people calling network marketing a Ponzi scheme, which is ridiculous. It's, it's obnoxious. It you know, makes us a little bit crazy. Uh, do everybody a favor, just quickly give people the, the definition, but you know, the difference between a Ponzi scheme and a, and a network marketing opportunity. Well, of course. And first of all, I'm really honored just to be on this program. Great. And uh, I'm excited about the event. Um, it's unmerited favor, so I really, really appreciate it. And I promise not to bore the attendees. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill it All for right, you. We won't let you. I'm gonna be a boring lawyer. Um, so when I hear people compare network marketing to Ponzi schemes, I just roll my eyes because there's a huge chasm that separates the two. Uh, Ponzi schemes essentially involve uh, a process where you invest money with the expectation of receiving passive returns over time, uh, not based on your efforts. So essentially, you're entitled to profit by nature of the investment. And where, where that, that, that sounds a lot like a security. Where, where it goes into the Ponzi scheme land is where the company owners manage the funds in a way where they're moving cash from new investors and they're, uh, and they're paying off old investors. And what always happens in that sort of a scenario, new cash slows down, new cash stops coming in, you know, as we saw with Bernie Madoff several years ago. And can, once the new cash stop, stops coming in, you can't pay the old investors anymore. And then poof. And then they start, and then, and then it shows up on American Greed on CNBC, and when they're chasing their tail, trying to stay away from the law or whatever. Exactly. And in network marketing, like like we talked about on the documentary, uh, network marketing is completely different because network marketing provides a situation where you're only paid for production. You're not paid upon somebody else's investment, somebody else's effort. If you're, you're, you or your organization sells product, then there's commissions paid based upon that product sale, and that's it. Absolutely. Regardless if the company does really well that month or really bad, if, as long as, as their volume is there, the commission check is, is static. And, and that's when I fell in love with the industry. Actually, when I was in college, I was selling energy drinks at, at bars and, uh, around school. Yeah. And, and the idea of the pay plan was appealing. The idea that I got paid on production. If I sold product, I, I, I made money. If I didn't sell product, I didn't make money. Uh, it wasn't based on who my daddy was or young, old, black, or white. It was appealing. So right. network marketing, pay for production, Ponzi scheme, essentially is an investment that's just destined to fail. And right. that's the difference. Right. So uh, you know, there's, there's critics of the network marketing profession that are so paper thin, in my opinion, um, because most of them stem from Wall Street investors that have decided to take a cheap shot. I don't want to get into any names, but they decided to take a cheap shot, call a, a legitimate network marketing company a pyramid, and try to profit from that right. accusation. So recently there was, a, there was a guy on Wall Street who invested a lot of money betting against that So for every dollar that the stock price would go down, he'd make a lot of money. And as soon as he made that investment, then he did this big presentation, he went and told the world, he told his friends to write articles, he had letter writing campaigns, all designed to be able to make a profit taking a cheap shot at people's misconceptions about the network marketing profession. It was purely profit uh, motivated, and I'm really happy to see that he's starting to get his butt kicked because the right. stock price is going up instead of going down. And I think that battle is going to continue. But anytime that there's a financial motivation, these people are going to come in and try to prey on people's misconceptions. They exploit the gray is what happens. And actually, somebody did it a few years ago, and they're, they're currently in prison uh, based on a felony. So it, it's a very delicate thing to short a company and then go on a very public campaign to bring that company down. And uh, the, the situation that you brought up that's happening recently, it is good to see because what, what, what's... It's good to see that it's not working for this exactly. guy. Exactly. It's good to see that it's not working. And, and uh, the industry's actually somewhat benefited, okay? So there's uh, no pain, no gain. And, and because of this very public attack that's happening, what I've seen over the past year 
is the industry get a little smarter, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I'm seeing more consumer protections. I'm seeing a, a greater emphasis on compliance, and I'm seeing a greater emphasis on training. And so, in a sense, his investment has made the industry stronger. And he's not going to profit from Backlash. it. Backlash, yeah, it's good. But it, it, it has been good. But you know what? There, there has been a, a lot of gray that separates legitimate network marketing from, from illegitimate companies out there. And uh, that gray is shrinking. Mm-hmm. So we're getting a better idea as far as what separates good from bad. And I think going forward, it's, it's a good time to be in network marketing right now. Yeah, I, and I will tell you, one thing that I, got, I just have to mention to everybody, people talk about this, this uh, you know, 90% of people don't make money in network marketing or, or not very much money in network marketing. Even some of the income disclosures that are out there, I think are so misleading to the negative. And here's why I think so. The majority of people that get involved as distributors, they're called distributors, but they're not distributors. They haven't distributed anything. They haven't recruited anybody. They haven't sold any product. They're just using the product. That's all they're doing. And they're usually getting it for a discounted price. And that's why they became a distributor. So they can become a product user. But yet those numbers are lumped in. So it's like saying, well, you know, everybody that buys at a store uh, you know, goes into Abercrombie and Fitch and they go buy a t-shirt, they're a loser. Right. You know, they, they lost money. Well, no, they didn't. Right. They, they walked out of there with a t-shirt right. or whatever it is. They got what they wanted. Yeah, they're not losers. They haven't failed. They got a product. And that's the same thing that happens with most people in network marketing. But yet, even on the income disclosure forms that, that companies have out there, they list all of those people, like all those Abercrombie and Fitch customers. They list all of those people as distributors when they still haven't distributed anything. Right. So there's a definition challenge inside of network marketing when it comes to that. If you take the people who are actively engaged in building a business and you did income cl- disclosures just on that group, the numbers are dramatically different and the 90% myth goes completely away. But anyway... Uh, I, I want to see some definition changes happen inside of network marketing, so people who are, haven't really distributed don't become don't get counted as distributors sure. until that happens. Because I love the fact that people get involved and use the product at a discounted price. Why not uh, let people do that? People do that all the time. Um, so here, here's the thing: I just wanted to 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 say hi to him, have him say hi to you. Uh, and let you know that he's going to be appearing on the documentary and also that he's going to be appearing at GoPro Recruiting Mastery. He's a friend to network marketing. He's a friend to the Network Marketing Pro community, and uh, it's good to have him looking out for our best interest and and being an ambassador for the profession. So anything else you want to say to everybody before we wrap up? No, just just express gratitude. I really appreciate it. And also, uh, come to my website, thompsonburton.com slash attorney. It's pretty simple. Great. You can check out all the different things that are going on in the network marketing profession. Everybody, our wish for you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional. You decide to go pro because it is a stone cold fact that we have a better way. Now let's go tell the world on the road on your behalf. Everybody have a great day and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care.